Hey, what's up guys? It's Tip and welcome to BlizzCon 2005. Now, for those who don't know, BlizzCon 2005 was actually the first ever BlizzCon back in the day. And because it was the first ever BlizzCon, Blizzard made it a very key point to go into the design philosophies of the original version of World of Warcraft. Of course, by that point, World of Warcraft had been out for approximately a year, and of course it had been received with resounding success. So this BlizzCon specifically is a gold mine for those who like game design, especially those who are seeking to understand the original design principles and philosophies implemented by Blizzard back in the original game. And of course, I'm one of those individuals. So in this new series, I'm going to be breaking down the highlights of each BlizzCon panel back in the day, and I'm going to be consolidating them so you guys can see some of the best bits and pieces, especially the bits and pieces that talk specifically about Blizzard's motivations and intentions behind specific features in the game. And seeing as we talked about class design a lot in the previous Classic Cast, which you can find on SFAN's channel, I figured it would be a great opportunity today to start off with the class panel discussion back in BlizzCon 2005. So we're gonna go ahead and run this footage real quick, and I'm gonna stop after each and every highlight and break down more or less how I interpret it. Concentrated coolness, you know, rather than just having, let's say, a class and we just kind of throw a bunch of random stuff on it. We want kind of everything about the class to feel focused and to make sense within the context of that class. But we also wanted to make sure that there was a separation of roles between every class. Something we didn't want to do was have just a few classes and then have a bunch of hybrid classes that fit in between. So right away, they drop us with a big bomb that contradicts pretty much everything that's happened to classes since Vanilla WoW. And of course, the man speaking in this clip is Rob Pardo, one of the original senior game designers. Rob Pardo is no longer with Blizzard Entertainment. He resigned a couple of years back. But you can see from the get-go, from this clip, that Blizzard had always intended for classes to have separate roles, to be unique, and to offer a different set of utility or a different set of any kind of abilities to a specific group. And unfortunately, obviously since then, that's kind of been lost due to homogenization and pruning. But hopefully, hopefully, it sounds like Blizzard is going to try to steer the ship back in the right direction. I'm rooting for you, Ion, but uh, we'll see how things go. But let's go ahead and continue. One of the major spells that never really came over, though, for example, was the uh, Summon Water Elemental spell. And that's because um, what we wanted to see out of the mage was not really a pet class. You know, we wanted to reserve that for, for other classes, and we felt like if we did that with the mage, it would actually kind of water down how the mage would play in a massively multiplayer game. Water down other classes. Well, isn't that genius? And I don't really want to rag on the live game too much. That's not really the point of this series. But in all honesty, guys, it's really difficult to separate the two. As you can see back in 2005, Blizzard had a very clear direction and a very clear design philosophy as to how they wanted to mold their classes. They wanted each class to be unique. Going so far as omitting the original water elemental from mages, a unit that existed, by the way, in Warcraft 3, if you remember that, they were actually willing to omit it in lieu of preserving unique class identity both for mages and of course for the other pet classes warlocks and hunters now as we know water elementals were eventually introduced into the game which is kind of unfortunate but again it's the callback it's showing that blizzard's original intention for the game their original design philosophies were much more rooted in traditional rpg oriented styles but i don't want to bore you with rpg talk for the next hour so let's go ahead and keep going and one of the spells that he had early in development was called chains of ice which brings us to um, our crowd control philosophy with classes. So when Chains of Ice was on the mage, the way that it worked was that you could actually um, cast on any, any enemy monster and that monster would stay in place. And you can cast on any number of monsters. And what we really wanted to achieve was to make sure that uh, it, all the classes that had crowd control had very limited crowd control. We wanted to try to get everyone involved in the crowd control if possible. We didn't want to have like one class that really change the entire game. So this one's really interesting for a number of reasons. First and foremost, if you're a Death Knight, you're probably scratching your head right now like, wait a minute, Chains of Ice, isn't that one of our abilities? Yes, it is. And you see that a lot, actually, during this panel and during the course of World of Warcraft history, basically. Blizzard has introduced a lot of abilities or has toyed around with a lot of abilities, specs, and concepts from one class. And later on, they realized themselves, well, hold on a second. This might actually be a really cool idea for another class down the line. Or they might actually use that original concept later on for the same class. And a good example of this is Focus. Focus was actually something introduced in World of Warcraft Alpha or Beta. I can't even remember. 
but it didn't return to hunters until I think, what, was it Legion? So there's definitely a lot of recycled ideas that are used in WoW, ideas that came up years ago and only recently have been actualized into the game because of a variety of different reasons. But the other important thing here, and honestly the more important of the two, is the idea that classes each have a certain set of crowd control abilities that they can bring into the group. What he meant by this is that classes should all be able to bring something to the table. You shouldn't just have one class being able to dominate one specific aspect of the game without any help whatsoever. No, the idea is that multiple classes should be able to bring something that can at least contribute to a dungeon run. And we've seen that in vanilla World of Warcraft through the implementation of separate buffs. We've seen it obviously as, uh, as stated by Rob Pardo through the implementation of separate crowd control abilities per class. Each class should be able to bring a piece of a puzzle to a dungeon. It allows more depth in group composition and trying to put together a group. It allows you to make decisions as to which class you will bring, but at the same time, it gives classes multiple different ways to contribute to a specific group, which I think is a brilliant idea. But moving forward. We wanted the Paladin to be one of the easier classes to play. It was actually intentional, and the main reason was we found that uh, the Paladin was a very attractive class for people to want to play initially because they felt like it was supposed to be a hybrid class. And hybrid classes tend to be easier to play and easier to solo in other massively multiplayer games. So we kind of took that to heart, and we really wanted to make sure that anyone that played the Paladin would kind of have an easier time. So this one's really interesting, too. The idea of Blizzard actually taking a look at classes and designing them around specific players. That's pretty crazy, especially because the implications are so broad, and we've actually heard it from Rob Pardo himself. They designed the Paladins specifically for new players. Very interesting concept. I'm not sure how I feel about it, to be honest. And one thing I do want to say, not everything stated in BlizzCon 2005 is something I personally agree with, but it's a really interesting concept with a lot of implications. And I actually want to hear your thoughts about it. What do you think of a company designing a class based on certain players rather than designing classes based on the actual archetype of the class. Do you like this idea? Do you not? Let me know in the comments section below, but let's go ahead and continue. And then we came up with the idea of uh, racial specific spells, which, you know, we decided to do the priest, obviously, and you can see kind of each race of priest has a couple special spells they're able to do. And we thought that worked out pretty well, and we're looking at maybe expanding on that a lot more in the expansion set. What? Expanding on the racial ability system? Hell yeah! Why didn't we ever get to see that, Blizzard? Why, why, why? I mean, this is just one example, and I wanted to bring it up specifically. One example of many times throughout BlizzCon 2005 that Blizzard hints at the idea of making the game more complex. Now, as we know, since basically Wrath of the Lich King, World of Warcraft has become far more streamlined and simplified than it was back in the day. But if you actually look at the developer feedback, especially early on into the game's development, you will see that Blizzard had always intended, always intended, always intended for the game to become more complex as time went on. And in this case, the idea of more racial abilities, possibly for classes. I mean, imagine having a human warrior with a separate warrior ability than an orc warrior, for example, or a Tauran warrior. Or at the same time, imagine racial abilities becoming more complex with possibly being able to customize them further than rather just have a base ability. I mean, there's so many things you can do with this concept, right? And there's so many ways you can elaborate on it. It's just really sad to hear this, and it honestly shocked me the first time I watched this panel, because we know, unfortunately, things just went the completely different way. Racial abilities were removed from the game, and on top of that, it just seems like every other system in World of Warcraft, from stats to itemization to what have you, has just become this streamlined, homogenized, bland, structured system. It's honestly really, really disappointing, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, if you're sensitive about this kind of stuff, BlizzCon 2005 is going to break your heart, but let's keep going. You to kind of be invested with what pet you had, and the reason it's so, you know, it takes a little bit of time to actually develop out a pet is because we wanted you to have that connection with the pet. And that was kind of the main differentiation between like hunter pets and warlock pets. A moment of silence for our fellow hunters. Remember when I said this will break your heart? Honestly, this was one of those moments. I can't believe I can't believe, I cannot believe the same developers that said this statement about Hunters are the same developers that took the game from where it was to where it eventually became. What we just listened to was a developer and a company 
who understood the potency and the immersion effect of RPG elements into a game. They understood what it meant to have a small and possibly inconsequential feature like feeding your pet or taking care of your pet. They understood how much more that enhanced the overall experience of immersion and investment into the game. And that is what RPGs are all about, immersion and investment. It's okay if it means that some pets are stronger than others. It's okay if it means that some pets will be better in certain situations than others. That doesn't matter. What matters is you feel like you are in control of your character, you feel like you're in control of your pet, and you feel invested into the identity of the pet that you selected. And if you're having a tough time with this, fellas, I recommend you go and grab the Kleenex box because there's still some really, really bad ones along the way. So let's go ahead and keep going. The Rogue was another class that really, you know, if you look at other games that have done Rogues, a lot of times they're very similar to kind of what I was talking about with my pet peeve with the Warrior was. You end up with a uh, very monotonous sort of class that you just waited for cooldowns and used that. And the Rogue in particular wanted to be a much more frenetic class to play. So we came up with the idea of uh, the energy bar along with the combo system. And what we were trying to accomplish there was we wanted a combo system that was a little bit uh, more freeform than you might see in other games. We didn't want to like force you into combat chains where you had to use opening move A and then B and then C. Now I want to stop for a second and ask you guys a little bit of a question. There is one word, one very important word, that has not been uttered yet throughout this entire panel. And we're about the 11 minute mark so far. What word is it? What word is it, guys? What is one of the most important words in the history of World of Warcraft that has not been mentioned yet in this entire class panel and will not be mentioned for the rest of the panel? Rating. 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 For 11 minutes of class design, and we've gone through at least seven or eight of the classes so far, we have not yet heard Blizzard mention the term rating surrounding class design. And that is brilliant. You see, in my opinion, classes should not be designed around rating. That's how you get homogenization. That's how you get pruning. That's how you get calls for class balance and so on and so forth. Classes should be designed to be incredibly unique experiences, to take away from RPG elements, and to make players feel like they are that class. We're living vicariously through this world in our avatars. That's what players want out of an RPG. Nobody cares about raid balance until the very, very end. And in all honesty, if you build a game around raid design, you're going to flop because raid design is a non-sustainable approach. There's not enough fun. There's not enough incentive to raid to keep players going. But we'll talk about that another time. It's an entirely different conversation. My point is, if you look at the original developers, if you look at the original people behind the original game, you will find that raiding to them was always an afterthought. It was always that extra thing at the end of the expansion or at the end of the game it was an epilogue. It was the thing at the end that so few people would actually do. Why design classes around this very, very small concept when you have 99% of the game as solo play, as dungeons, as questing, etc.? It's honestly sad, but uh, unfortunately we don't have too much time left, so let's go ahead and move on. As we were developing the character classes in WoW, we were kind of slowly but surely coming to the realization that we really needed more ability for characters of a given class to differentiate themselves from other players of the same class. More customization, more specialization, more ways for me to distinguish myself from other players of that same class. And I don't know why, guys. I don't know why. I don't know why this philosophy was abandoned. But as you can see, back in the day, it was something they were very, very keen on. They wanted you to be able to distinguish yourself from other members of the same class. Let me give you a real life example. You are a doctor and your friend next to you is also a doctor. However, you specialized in orthopedics and you are an orthopedic doctor. The other guy specialized in cardiology and now he is a cardiologist. You're both doctors, which is fantastic. But at the same time, you both have very specific sets of skills, very specific specializations that allow you to go much deeper into a specific realm of biology. If my back was hurting, I'm sorry, I wouldn't go to the cardiologist. I would go to the orthopedic. But at the same time, if there was no orthopedic around me, I would still go to the cardiologist because I think he would have at least a basic set of tools to point me at least into the right direction. And that's the point. That's the point, that's the point of specialization. 
It gives you the opportunity to be unique within your class without making you feel like another class entirely. And customization has always been one of the most desired features for MMO players. And for whatever reason, developers have seemed to stray from this year after year after year. I'm sick of playing MMOs who cannot deliver on this element. I'm sick of playing games that treat you like an archetype and that's it, you're the same as everybody else. I want to see games with more customizations and more ways to distinguish yourself from the players playing the same class. So some of the key concepts that we looked to for further evolving the talent system were we took some inspiration from Diablo 2. Taking inspiration from Diablo. I guess some things never change. Some of the things that make our class balance a considerable challenge are that we have a lot of different types of gameplay. We have a lot of different types of gameplay. A lot of different types of gameplay. We have so many different types of gameplay. That is so important. And as you can see, guys, I kind of lied to you before. This is the only time that the term raid is brought up in this class panel, and it's not even mentioned. It's only used as part of a bullet point. And as you can see here, it is one of four different game modes, so to speak, that Blizzard interpreted were available in the game at the time. Notice how Raid doesn't have its own bullet point. It's simply one part of the game amongst various other types. And on top of that, as Tom Chilton just said, Tom Chilton, by the way, is also no longer with the game. Tom Chilton just said, that the difficulty with balancing classes is because of all of these different types of, I guess, game interactions or game features they have in World of Warcraft. You cannot balance all classes around solo play and then at the same time try to balance all classes around group play and then at the same time try to balance all classes around PvP without some classes being weaker than others. The only way you can make it perfect is if you homogenize all classes, they all do the exact same thing, and as we know, that is incredibly boring. In the context of 2018, in the context of the modern world, what can developers do to solve the issue of class balance? Well, in my opinion, honestly, you shouldn't even try. You should not try to balance classes. You should try to make classes unique. You should try to create multiple situations where classes can thrive but you should not try to balance classes directly. Of course, you should always hotfix exploits and bugs, and if a class is supremely overpowered, you should address it. But trying to get classes down to within 5% of grade DPS of one another, it's so stupid, guys. It's so stupid. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. It's been almost 15 years and Blizzard still hasn't been able to do this, even after implementing specific weapons for specific specs. And on top of that, having talent trees within those weapons to be able to tune with each spec, they still haven't been able to do it, guys. And they will never be able to do it without pruning classes from start to finish. Class balance is a myth. Give me more ways for my class to distinguish itself and to provide utility in very particular situations. I want more than just raid, solo, group, PvP. I want a lot of sub mini games, sub metas that keeps me relevant and keeps my class in demand. So with all this said and done, what are my concluding thoughts here? Well, I've got a couple. First and foremost, it is clear, it is clear, it is clear, without a doubt, Blizzard has strayed from these original design philosophies. These philosophies are not what guide the game today. Things have drastically changed. Raiding has become the linchpin of World of Warcraft, as has the end game, and class uniqueness, I guess you could call it class identity as we hear today, has almost been long forgotten. I mean, in all fairness, it does seem like something Blizzard is trying to improve. They tried to improve it with Legion, and it looks like Ian Hazakostas is trying to right the ship, so to speak. But if we look back at 2004 and compare it to today, Classes are not nearly as unique as they used to be. The second thing to take away from this panel is that Blizzard did not succeed by accident. Vanilla was no accident. And I keep seeing this on a lot of my recent videos, my Why It Was Great videos, especially the itemization video. I see a lot of people saying that, oh, the reason itemization was so good in vanilla was by accident. Blizzard never intended this. I completely disagree. And I think if you look at all the different panels at BlizzCon 2005, along with some of the older blue posts from back in the day, Blizzard knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they wanted out of their game. And they knew that it would have rough edges, but ultimately it would feel more like an experience. It would feel more like a simulated game world 
than this generic Skinner box, mechanical, artificial, engineered, as Knox called it, uh, game. And I want to give credit to the original developers. I mean, World of Warcraft was not an accident. They knew exactly what they were doing. And as a result, we got one of the best games in the history of gaming period. But that's it for this panel, guys. And thank you so much for dealing with all of my rambling. I know I've been going on a lot of tangents, a lot of rants here. But game design is something I really, really care about. And uh, more specifically, I really want to know what made Vanilla so great. And when I go back and I watch these panels, it reminds me. It reminds me. And it reminds me how brilliant the original developers were. And it reminds me that it wasn't just the right place at the right time, as a lot of people have said. WoW's success did not come from a gimmick. WoW's success came from individuals who understood what made RPGs great and they took those concepts and they were able to implement them in a highly polished game whose polish levels we have not seen basically since. That is what made World of Warcraft successful. Sure, you have other contributing factors, but ultimately the game was darn good. And I believe, I believe, I believe if the game were re-released today, which is going to happen with Classic WoW, it is going to be just as popular as it was back in 2004 to 2006. Not because of nostalgia, not because of the game being released at the right time, because fundamentally the game embodied design principles that are timeless, that are loved, and that people, regardless of age, gender, demographic, will enjoy. But with that said, thank you very much for watching the video, guys. If you want to talk more about class design or design philosophies, or you just want to hang out with some like-minded individuals that are stoked for classic, join my Discord channel that's linked in the description below. We're a growing community. We've got a bunch of fantastic members. We're over 250 so far, and we'd love to have you guys hang out with us. We chat all the time, every evening, voice chats, general chats, whatever. It's just a great place to hang out with like-minded individuals. So if you want to hang out, if you want to talk about this stuff, go ahead and click on the link, and we'd love to have you. And for more Classic WoW content, news, and updates, you can follow me on my Twitter, linked in the description as well. There are a couple more BlizzCon 2005 panels that I want to review, so be on the lookout for that. But aside from that, boys, have a wonderful day, fellas. And as always, tips out, baby!